So, um, let's set this just to sawtooth for a second. You can hear the beating of those oscillators not being entirely in tune, which is a good thing in a modern synth. You can get them close, but they're still going to phase. Which is the way an analog synthesizer should work. This perfectly in tune stuff, yeah, not so much. Another part of the oscillator is Portamento, which you have provided with a nice knob here. I have it turned up to 10 for that. Okay, and while we're talking about the oscillators, there is a frequency modulation section, which basically is the modulation that controls, uh, it's the modulation for the oscillators. And uh, they are hardwired to give you the modulation generator with this knob and envelope one with this knob. Let's listen to the modulation generator. So, you know, you have to patch the wheel to do your bidding, but, uh, you know, which can be a hassle. It can't always be convenient. Uh, it's never a hassle. It's actually really fun. But in instances where you want to save your patch cables or whatever, or the mod wheel for something else, you can always just reach over and add your own modulation. After all, a mod wheel is really just a pot. It's just a knob, just like any of these knobs. So if you want some modulation, you can always just reach over and give yourself. And that's what's going to happen here, unless there's patching. And if there's patching, then uh, it's going to have a different function we'll cover later. Uh, we have envelope generator one, which is really fun. You really should have an envelope generator connected to your oscillators on an analog synth because it allows you to do some cool transient stuff, some stuff that you really want to have happen. In this instance, let's listen. Nothing is happening. That's because we haven't set envelope generator one. I have delayed the attack time. And so how this works, it's an interesting arrangement. Envelope generator one, when it's turned on and modulating oscillator one, it basically starts from zero and moves up to the note, which is, you know, basically how an envelope works. It starts at zero and moves up to a voltage and then, you know, goes down or whatever. So it starts you at zero and moves up or kind of zero. It actually kind of seems to slide, but anyway. But depending on how much, you know, to what degree you have the envelope generator one control set, it will give you the degree to what to which the voltage affects your pitch. That's pretty serious with that. So if you want to have that little attack transient where the pitch scoops up. That's a great option for a monophonic synth. Uh, a lot of really classic analog synthesizers don't have that opportunity. And of course you have also the opportunity to add a release time. Uh-oh, it's not working. And why is it not working? Anyone? No, I can't hear you anyway. Um, it's because we don't have any release in the envelope that we're working with. This envelope is controlling our amplifier, and right now it's only sustained. When I hold down a key, it's gonna make a noise. When I stop holding down a key, it's gonna stop, and that cuts off the release time opportunity that exists in envelope generator one. So we'll turn up the release in envelope generator two so we can hear what it does. And that's it falling away. We can control to what degree it falls away. The less high we go, the shorter the fall away will be. So if we put it way up, you could do like this. And you can hear it fall away there at the end. That's a cool option to have on a, on a synthesizer. 
And it's unique. It's one of those things. You know, the MS-20 is such a distinctive sounding synthesizer, which is why it's so great. You hear an MS-20, you go, that's an MS-20, and that's a sound I want to use. That's why this synthesizer it has, has retained its popularity. It's because it has a distinctive sound, and it does things that are pleasing to our ears. We also have the delay time, which delays the degree to which the envelope affects the pitch. So let's turn that up and hear what happens. It starts you on a note that you basically choose using the EG1 amount. The less, you know, of the effect, the more the note's going to be the original starting note, okay? This is a D. So you can set the starting pitch. And then control how long the attack takes and the release takes with these other controls. So you can start at clicks at nothing. And then it'll drop back down. So that's pretty cool. But the delay time tells you how long it's going to take for it to when it starts at the note that you've chosen to get to the, the note that is the, um, the actual note. So that could take a really long time. It's really better for some other effects, but you know, you, you can see. You can hear it starting on the starting note and then leaping up to... The note that is the actual note. Okay, and so that is basically, without getting into patching, our voltage control oscillator reception.